Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn about the final subtopic in Introductions to Organic Chemistry called Reactions in Organic Chemistry. As for this subtopic, we're going to first be introduced to the two covalent bond cleavage, homolytic and hydrolytic. This bond cleavage will form intermediate species of free radicals, carbocation ions and carboanions. We'll look at their relative stabilities to determine their reactivity in the reactions. For a chemical reaction to happen, the reactant must first interact. You will need to classify which species will be the one to attack and being attacked. They are termed as nucleophile and electrophile, as well as their reactivity site means in which part of the species the reactions will take place. Once all the species involved is ready, either one of these reactions, additions, eliminations, substitutions, or rearrangement will take place. Homolytic cleavage takes place in a non-polar bond where two atoms of similar electronegativity are joined. Say we have this chlorine-chlorine single bond, then with the presence of light or UV or HV, this single bond will break into two equal parts, leaving each atom with one unpaired electron known as free radicals. Heterolytic cleavage takes place in a polar bond where two atoms of different electronegativity are joined. One with partially positive, another one is partially negative. So this single bond will break asymmetrically into two unequal parts. Means the arrow to be used in this cleavage is no longer the same as in homolytic cleavage. This time we'll use this full heated arrow. Means both electrons on this single bond will be pulled to only one atom. But how do we know where will the electron be pulled? So this bond breaking is led by the electronegativity of the atom. So the arrow will pointing towards species that has stronger pull for electron, denoted by this partially negative charge. One of the species to be formed is electron deficiency, where less electron in it, the one with partially positive. In HCl, will form H plus as the K ion, while for chloroethane, means carbon with positive charge, we have this carbocat ion. Another species is electron rich, where more electron in it, the one with partially negative. So, for both examples, we have chlorine as the ion. In a chemical reaction, we are going to use a number of arrows. So, the first arrow that is most common to be used is the reactions arrow. It simply tells you that product can be formed from reactant. And then we have this equilibrium arrow. This equilibrium arrow, denoted by this half-heated double arrow pointing in opposite directions, they are used to depict a reversible reactions. And then we have this full heated single arrow pointing in both directions indicates the resonance structure, means a single Lewis structure cannot fully describe the bonding. And lastly, we have curly arrows. These two curly arrows are used in mechanism. They want to show the various electron pairs moving around. As for the first curly arrow in here, we are going to show the movement of an electron pair. That's why we have this full heated arrow indicates two electrons. And then we have this half-heated arrow indicates movement of only one electron. We will be discussing relative stabilities of three carbon intermediate species. The first species is formed from the homolytic cleavage of carbon, known as carbon radicals. Second, carbon with partially positive and bromine with partially negative undergo hydrolytic cleavage forming carbocation ion and bromine anion. The third species, where we have a more negative species, wants to take an atom from a more positive molecule. They are not necessarily CH. Breaking the bond between the carbon and also the hydrogen, and all the electron will be transferred to this carbon, resulting carbon with extra electron known as carbonion, and also this HBr as a small molecule. Free radical of carbon is an electron deficit species where it has only seven electrons around its valence shell. So it is a short-lived highly reactive species due to its strong tendency to acquire only one more electron to complete its octet. It can be classified into four classes, metal, primary, secondary, and tertiary. As this species is an electron deficient, means it will become more stable to undergo reactions if it is surrounded by electron-rich species, in other words, the electron donating group. Therefore, by having more electron donating group, usually characterized by the alkyl groups, they will somehow increase the stability of the free radicals. So the order of stability of free radicals follows the order of tertiary, secondary, primary, and metal. 
Carboxylic ions can be defined as positively charged ion, means the carbon is having a positive charge because it has only six electrons in its valence shell. Because we involve a carbon, so there will be four classes altogether, same as in the free radicals. So the carboxylic ion, by definition, is different from free radicals, but since they are both electron deficits, so the order of stability of carboxylic ion will be determined from the number of electron donating group as well. Hence, the most stable carboxylic ion is the tertiary with the most number of alkyl group attached to it, which is 3, 1, 2, 3, followed by the secondary with two alkyl group attached to it, primary with one alkyl group, and the least stable is the methyl. Methyl got no alkyl group attached to it. Carbon ions can be defined as negatively charged ion, in which the carbon now is having a negative charge due to five valence electrons surrounds this carbon. So these carbon ions got four classes as well. We have methyl, primary, secondary, and also tertiary. Note that the trend is going to be different from the two species we have discussed. This is due to the carbon ion nature that is electron rich. As this species is electron rich already, means it will become more stable to undergo reactions if it is surrounded by electron deficient species. The presence of alkyl group in these carbon ions will only destabilize the species because it will keep on adding electrons to it. Therefore, the stability of carbon ion decreases if more alkyl group surrounds it. In other words, its increasing trend of stability will follow the order of methyl followed by the primary, secondary, and the least level going to be the tertiary. As mentioned earlier in this lesson, reagents being used in the reactions must first be classified into two species. One of them is called nucleophile. Nucleophile is a species that has electrons available for the reactions. So these species have a propensity to give away those electrons because they have lots of them. They can be either neutral or negatively charged. Examples of nucleophile are Lewis base, such as anions and carbon ions, and also molecules with one pair. They clearly have extra electron on them. Other than that, molecules that contain pi bond means the extra electrons comes from the pi bond in here, but then the pi bond must be between carbon and carbon only. Nucleophile is simply a species that is capable to donate electron, but where exactly the extra electrons is located, which will drive the reactions, is known as nucleophilic site. It is a specific area on the nucleophile that contains high density of electrons. On neutral molecules on the left, and also the negatively charged on the right, the nucleophilic site is at the lone pair. While when there is pi bond between carbon and carbon, the nucleophilic site is at the bonding of electrons between the carbons. Electrophile is an electron deficient species that is capable to only accept electron pair in order to form a bond. Since this species has less electron in it, it tends to be attracted to electron-rich species. Electrophile can exist in both neutral and also positively charged. Examples of electrophile are Lewis acid, such as AlCl3, cations, and also carbon ions. And then it can also be the oxidizing agents such as chlorine and also bromine. And then they can also be the polar molecules such as HCl and HBr. As for molecules that containing pi bond, they can also become the electrophile. But this happens to pi bond of polar bond only, such as carbonyl. So we have carbon and also oxygen, partially positive and partially negative. Electrophilic site is a hotspot for the electron rich species, in other words, the nucleophile to attack. It is a specific area on the electrophile that contains low density of electrons. So this site can usually be found at a partially positive carbon in hyaloalkane, alcohol, and also carbonyl compound. So this nucleophile, the electron rich species, will attack this electrophilic site and undergo a reaction. There are four types of reactions in organic chemistry that you need to know. The first one is going to be the additions. Additions can be further divided into two, electrophilic additions and also nucleophilic additions. And then the second one, we have eliminations. The third one, we have substitutions. Substitutions, we got free radical substitution, electrophilic aromatic substitutions, and nucleophilic substitutions. And the last one, we have this rearrangement. Electrophilic additions means electrophile being added to the nucleophile. This type of reactions involves only carbon-carbon multiple bond as its nucleophile. 
where its nucleophilicide lies on the pi bond. Given this example of unsaturated hydrocarbons ethene as the nucleophile, attacking the Br2, the electrophile, to form the product of 1,2-dibromoethene. Nucleophilic additions means nucleophile being added. This is the most common reactions of aldehyde and ketones. First, the nucleophile will approach this electrophilic carbon of the carbonyl group, and then one of the single bond on this double bond will break to give all the electrons to form this O negative as the intermediate. And then a series of reactions takes place, to finally form the product with nucleophile on it. Eliminations reactions is reactions in which a pair of atoms or group of atoms are removed from a molecule, which is the opposite reactions to the additions. Usually through the actions of acids or bases or metals, and in some cases by heating to a high temperature, we are going to form compound with multiple bonds from this reaction. Free radical substitutions takes place in an alkane because this intermediate species of free radical is formed from the homolytic cleavage with the presence of light. So given to you this example, we have this non-polar bond between carbon and hydrogen and chlorine and chlorine. Each of these atoms getting one of the two electrons from the bond. And then once the radical of Cl, hydrogen and carbon is formed, they will immediately do the substitution reactions to finally form product with chlorine attached to the C and also chlorine attached to this hydrogen. Nucleophilic substitutions means nucleophile being substituted by replacing an atom on the electrophile. So these reactions usually take place in haloalkenes. This is because the halogen from group 17 is a very good living group. You need to first identify the electrophilic sites on the haloalkene by denoting partially positive and partially negative sites. And then the nucleophile will approach these electrophilic carbons of haloalkane from the back. And then the bond between carbon and bromine will break to finally form product with nucleophile on it. That's why nucleophile is substituted on this electrophile. Electrophilic aromatic substitutions is reactions in which an atom that is attached to an aromatic ring, usually hydrogens, is replaced by an electrophile. For example, this benzene as electron rich species that has the nucleophilic site here will attack electrophilic sites on this Br2 with the help of catalyst to form substituted benzene in here. So the hydrogen has been replaced with some other electrophile. Last but not least, rearrangement. It is a reaction in which an atom, ion, group of atoms, or chemical unit migrates from one atom to another atom in the same or different species resulting in a structural isomer of the original molecule. We initially got alkyl group of two carbons in here, but then it's undergo rearrangement to have only one alkyl group on each carbon. That's all for subtopic 4.4 and this marks the end of this chapter 4. Thank you!